What's up guys, my name is Ryan and I spent the last several years exploring the British Isles and I want to share with you my favorite places. So here's my British Isles Top 25. The British Isles are made up of the countries of Ireland, Northern Ireland, England, Wales, and Scotland. If you want to go back in time and feel like you're in a fairy tale, the British Isles are the place for you. It's easy to see why so many myths and legends were born here. It's one of the world's most enchanting lands. Let's start this video off at the Skellig Islands. Located off the coast of Southern Ireland, the Skelligs are a set of two islands that are easily one of the most epic locations on the British Isles. The only way to reach the islands is by boat. We left from the town of Port McGee and it took us about an hour to reach the Great Skellig. We got off the boat and I was just so freaking stoked. We just started walking up the island's path until we reached the stairs that lead up to the top to the monasteries. Now the stairs were just beyond cool. There were hundreds if not thousands of puffins burrowed right next to the stairs and on the island slopes. I mean they were just so freaking cute. We reached the midway point at Christ Saddle and then kept hiking to the top. After climbing the island's 618 stairs, we finally made it to the monastery. Now the history of the island is just absolutely fascinating. The monastic settlement dates back to the 6th century where the monks of St. Fionan lived simple lives on this isolated island. They built these beehive huts completely out of stone. They were precisely designed to make sure no water could get into them. Now it's believed there were about 12 monks that lived here at a time. In the 13th century, the monks left the island for mainland Ireland and since then Skellig has become a place for pilgrimage. All in all the Skellig Islands were one of the coolest places I've ever been and I couldn't recommend them enough. Afterwards we're going to visit the most famous place in all of Ireland, the Cliffs of Moher. Now located on Ireland's west coast, about a three hours drive from Dublin, the cliffs stretch over 14 kilometers with the highest reaching 214 meters above the sea. When we reached them, I was just amazed by the size of the cliffs. I mean, they were way bigger than I imagined and they just drop off straight into the ocean. If you wanna to walk to the end of the cliffs, you can make the trek to Hag's Head. If you can, I definitely recommend waiting for sunset as the light hits the cliffs, giving it a strikingly orange glow I mean, it's easy to see why it's one of the most popular places in all Ireland. After, we're gonna head over to Ireland's charming capital of Dublin. Located on Easter Island's coast, Dublin is a city full of charm. The capital is full of beautiful gardens and architecture, has such a friendly vibe to it. While you're there, you can walk across the River Liffey on the uniquely designed Samuel Beckett Bridge, or you can walk over to the coast to experience the Irish Sea. I just love the feel and ambience of Dublin. It's such a magical capital. Now from Dublin, we're going to drive a few hours up to Northern Ireland. Now, Northern Ireland is interesting because it's part of the UK. Back in 1921, Ireland was split into the North and Southern Ireland. One of my favorite places in Northern Ireland is Giant's Causeway. Giant's Causeway is one of the most recognizable places in all of Ireland. It's famous for its jagged cliffs and over 40,000 basalt columns. They are these perfect hexagons that cover the coast. According to legend, the causeway was built by an Irish giant so he could cross the northern sea. When I was there, we started by hiking above the cliffs and then made our way down to the causeway. I was just amazed by the bizarre rock formations. I had such a fun time walking on them. It's wild to think they were made by nature. Now while we're still in Northern Ireland, we're going to head over to Carrick Arid. It's this scenic bridge that crosses the sea over to this little island. I was just amazed by the water color there. I mean, it's just so blue, contrasted perfectly with the green cliffs. Now just 20 minutes from there, you can visit the dark hedges. It's this avenue lined with over 90 beech trees. They were planted almost 250 years ago. Now according to legend, there's a ghost called the Grey Lady who wanders the road. Definitely has a spooky vibe, especially at night. After Northern Ireland, we're going to head over to England to visit Cornwall. Now located on England's southwestern tip, Cornwall is home to some of the best coastline in all of England. While the northern coast is full of impressive sea cliffs such as Godrevy Point, the southern coast is named the Cornish Riviera as it's full of scenic harbor towns and villages. One of my favorites is Loo. It's this picturesque town that's divided by the Loo River, which empties into the sea. 
There's an incredible beach full of classic English houses. It very well could be a fairy tale. One of the most impressive locations in Cornwall is St. Michael's Mount. It's a tidal island with an impressive castle on top. It's believed to be the home of a monastery from the 8th to 11th centuries, and the castle on the island summit dates back to the 12th centuries and has been renovated throughout the ages. When the tide goes out, you can walk across the stone causeway to get there. I think it's one of the coolest places in England. It reminds me a lot of Francis Mont Saint Michel, which is also a tidal island with similar features. While we're still in southwestern England, we're going to head over to the Isles of Scilly. Located about 28 miles off of Cornwall, the Isles of Scilly are an archipelago made up of five inhabited islands with a population around 2,000 people. The islands are full of crystal clear waters, historical sites, and rolling green hills. To reach the islands, you can take a three hour ferry from Penzance or you can take a short plane ride. The islands truly are stunning. I'd love to get a boat and just sail around the islands in the summertime. Afterwards, we're going to head back to the mainland of England to visit possibly the most iconic city in the world, London. Now, I've traveled to London several times and I have to say it's one of my favorite cities. Everything from double-decker buses to the energy of Piccadilly Circus make this city feel so alive. You can check out the iconic Big Ben and walk across the bridge to see the Palace of Westminster. There's the Tower Bridge, which is possibly the most famous bridge in all of London. You can also see the Stoic Guards at Buckingham Palace or take a ride on the London Eye. If you haven't already been to London, I highly recommend visiting when you can. It's hard to beat the London atmosphere. There's just no city like it in the world. After, we're going to head back to the coast to visit the White Cliffs of Dover. Located about two hours drive from London, the White Cliffs of Dover are not only a beautiful scenic location, but also an intriguing historical site, especially regarding World War II history. Since the cliffs are Britain's closest point to continental Europe, being only 20 miles from France, during World War II, crossing from Dover was the primary route to Europe by boat or plane, so the White Cliffs were the first and last site of Britain for the troops. After the evacuation of Dunkirk, the site of the Cliffs of Dover was a sign of relief as the thousands of Allied troops made it safely back to Britain. I mean, the history of these cliffs is absolutely fascinating. Now, while we're still on the topic of cliffs, we're going to visit the Seven Sisters. Now, located about two hours from Dover, the Seven Sisters are home to some of the most beautiful cliffs in all of England. I love how there's just this perfectly green grass, then a straight drop off of the white cliffs to the beach below. The Seven Sisters has been used in film and television as a stand-in for the White Cliffs of Dover. They look just like them, and I think, honestly, they're more scenic and less people and infrastructure there. Regardless, the Seven Sisters are an incredible coastline and a perfect place to stroll along the English coast. Now, afterwards, we're going to visit the city of Brighton. Now, located about 40 minutes from the Seven Sisters, Brighton is a beautiful resort town with a massive beach that lines the English Channel. One of the most interesting features is the Brighton I-360. It's a tower that rises up and offers an incredible view of Brighton. Another feature I really like about Brighton is its piers. There's the remains of the West Pier that was built in 1866 but was sadly burnt down in 2003. And then there's the Brighton Palace Pier which was established in 1899 and has an amusement park at the end. Now afterwards we're going to head over to the Jurassic Coast. While you won't find any dinosaurs here, you might find some fossils on the beach. One of the most famous spots on the Jurassic Coast is Dirtle Door. It's this limestone arch that goes straight into the ocean. There's a great beach there, and I can't think of a better place to spend on a warm summer day. One of my favorite spots on the Jurassic Coast is Old Harry's Rocks. I remember the first time I saw a picture of this place, and I was just baffled by the scenery. The Old Harry's Rocks are these sea stacks that are made completely out of chalk that mark the end of the Jurassic Coast. In World War II, the stacks were used for target practice by pilots. Pretty wild. Now afterwards, we're going to visit the Isle of Wight. Located across the sea from Old Harry's Rocks, the Isle of Wight is the largest island in all of England. You can reach the Isle of Wight by taking a ferry from Southampton or also by taking a hovercraft from Portsmouth. Now one of my favorite features of the Isle of Wight is the Needles Lighthouse. It's this 19th century lighthouse that is built upon these chalk rocks that jet out of the sea. It's such a unique location and I just love the White Sea Cliffs. Afterwards, we're going to visit the Lake District. Located in northwestern England, the Lake District is known for its glacial ribbon lakes and its fell mountains. It's home to Scoffell Pike, which is the highest place in all of England with an elevation of 3,209 feet. The area is just absolutely beautiful. I think one of the best things you can do in the Lake District is just drive on the roads that wind through the mountains. One notable road is the Honister Pass. If you keep driving down the pass, 
you'll reach Buttermere Lake. It's surrounded by massive mountains and it's just incredible overall scenery. I and mean, I couldn't recommend the Lake District enough. Easily one of the most beautiful places in all of England. After the Lake District, we're gonna head over to the country of Wales. Located in the southwest part of Great Britain, Wales is famous for its mountainous national parks, picturesque coastline, and distinct Welsh language. One of the most scenic places in Wales is the Snowdonia National Park. It's a region in northwest Wales that is known for its mountains and lakes. The highest peak in Wales is Mount Snowdon, which is located in the park with an elevation of 1,085 meters. You can hike to the top or also take the Snowdon Mountain Railway. One of my favorite lakes in Snowdonia is Lynn Padarn. It's located on the base of Mount Snowdon. It's just such a serene area. Now, if you want to explore some of Wales coastline, the Lynn Peninsula offers some scenic locations. I really like the area around the Ir Ivel Mountain. It's a beautiful coast coupled with green farmland and has a backdrop of impressive peaks. Afterwards, we're gonna head up to Scotland to visit Edinburgh. If you wanna go back in time, Edinburgh is a must. When I started traveling, this was one of the first cities I ever visited. It's a medieval old town with intricate neoclassical buildings and cobblestone streets. The iconic Edinburgh Castle overlooks the city. It's one of the oldest fortified places in all of Europe. Now while we're still in Edinburgh, we're going to head over to Arthur's Seat. Arthur's Seat is located on Holyrood Park and it's a short walk from Edinburgh Center. Arthur's Seat is an extinct volcano with an elevation of 823 feet. When I was there, I wanted to get as high as I could so I could see all Edinburgh. I made the hike up and reached the top. It was so windy up there, I just couldn't believe it. After I hiked to the top, I just had a good time hiking around Hollyrod Park and enjoying the views of one of the British Isles most iconic cities. Another stunning nearby place in Scotland is Denotar Castle. It's located about two hours drive from Edinburgh. This medieval fortress is full of history. It's where the Scottish crown jewels were hidden during the 17th century. Today only the ruins tell the castle's past. The cliffs that surround the fortress make it so dramatic. Now just an hour north from the Notre Castle is the Rattray Head Lighthouse. It's an amazing beach area with a 112 feet tall lighthouse just off the coast and was built in 1895. If you keep driving up the coast, you'll reach the Duncansby Stacks. It's located at the most northeastern part of the British mainland. It's about a six hours drive from Edinburgh, so quite the road trip, but it's definitely worth it. It's home to some of the most beautiful sea stacks in all the British Isles. After the sea stacks, we're gonna head over to Glencoe. Located in the Scottish Highlands, Glencoe is home to some of Scotland's most beautiful scenery and mountains. I found this place by accident as I was driving around the Highlands. It's been the filming location for many popular movies such as Braveheart. My favorite part of Glencoe is its mountains. I mean, I couldn't believe how huge they were. I felt like I was in Switzerland or Norway. I recommend just taking a drive on the A82 road and you can just see all the wonders Glencoe has to offer. It has one of my favorite mountains in the area. I won't even try to pronounce that. It has an almost perfect pyramid shape and you get a great view of it from the road. Now after it, we're gonna head over to one of Scotland's most iconic locations, the Glenfinan Viaduct. Located at the top of Loch Shiel in the West Highlands of Scotland, this may look familiar because it was featured in the Harry Potter movies. While I was there, I wanted to get a close look at the bridge, so I walked underneath it. I was just shook how big it actually was. After, I hiked up to a good vantage point so I could see the famous train go across the viaduct. It was such a magical experience. For our final destination, we're going to visit the Isle of Skye. This is one of my favorite places, not just in Scotland, but the world. You literally feel like you're in a fairy tale when you visit. I was lucky enough to go here a few summers ago and it was one of the most memorable weeks of my life. Now to get there, it's about a five hours drive from Edinburgh. One of the most impressive places on the Isle of Skye is the Old Man of Store. It's one of my all time favorite rock formations. I felt like I was on the set of Game of Thrones. When you drive to the store, you can see in the distance and just gets you so pumped. Now to get to the Old Man of Store, it's about a four kilometer hike. You walk through some conservation gates and you'll reach the infamous rock pinnacles. I went for sunrise and sunset and both occasions were breathtaking. So the legend of the old man store is supposedly a giant lived here a long time ago and when he was buried, his thumb was left sticking out of the ground creating the mystical rock formation. Just a few minutes away from the old man store, there's a breathtaking waterfall called Meow Falls that cascades down into ocean. There's a nice viewpoint where you can look at the waterfall. One of the most famous sea cliffs is Kilt Rock, which are right next to Mia Falls. If you do want to go on a beautiful hike, I recommend visiting the Kering. It's one of the most beautiful areas in the Isle of Skye. You feel like you're walking on a giant golf course. 
I found this insane vantage point to get a good panoramic view of the area. I just love this place so much. Well, that is it for my British Isles Top 25. Let me know where your favorite place is in the comments below. I also have a second channel where I make hour-long relaxation films to bring some peace and nature in your life. I've done several videos on the British Isles that I think you'll enjoy. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Shirley.Films. It's Ryan, and we will see you later.